بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, This is the major one of calculus 2 term 2 2 2 uh, Let us have a look and solve it together the first, the first question says use the definition of the integral to evaluate this integral expressing it as a limit of a right Riemann summation. Well, uh, if you remember the definition, there is, the definition says that integral from A to B f of x dx, where f of x in this case is this function, and A is zero and B is one, is equal to the limit limit of Riemann sum, uh, n goes to infinity, and the summation works from one to n of f of xi times delta x, where delta x is defined by b minus a over n, and xi is a plus i delta times delta x. So this is the definition. And uh, let us start by finding delta x. So in this case, delta x would be b minus a1 minus 0 over n. And then let us find, I'm following this definition. Okay, I found delta x, then I'll find xi, then f of xi, and then the summation, then the limit. So I'll have the integral. So let me find now xi. So by definition, it is a, where a is 0 plus i times delta x. So this is delta x. If you multiply 1 over n times i, you get i over n. Now let me find f of x i, which is f of i over n. Well, f of x is x squared plus x plus 1. So if I replace x by i over n, I'll, I'll be able to find f of i over n. So f of i over n would be i over n to the power 2, which means i squared over n squared, plus x, which is here i over n plus 1. And now let us uh, find summation f of xi times delta x from 1 to n. So it's equal to summation. Now I need to multiply delta x by f of xi. This is f of xi. If I multiply by delta x, which is one over n, I will get an i square over n square times one over n. So it would be i square over n cube. Then i over n times one over n would be i over n square. Then one times one over n would be 1 over n. I know from probabilities of summation that I can take the constants out and the summation distributes uh, when you have some sum of three terms okay, or more. So 1 over n3, I can take it out and I will still have inside the summation, summation i squared. Then plus, I can take one over n square out, and inside the sum, I'll have summation i. And you can take one over n out, and then you will have summation one, okay? Notice that summation one here, from one to n. And now I have some properties, some formulas for summation i squared, summation i, and summation one. For example, summation i squared, uh, as n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 2 over 6 or 2n plus 1 I think uh, let me let me see plus 1 over n square times summation i, which is n times n plus 1 over 2, 
plus one over n times summation one, which is n. So I think this is two n plus one, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And this is two n plus one. Okay. And now let me simplify this. So n cancels with n cube. So I'll have n uh, plus one times two n plus one over six n squared. And uh, plus, I can cancel it in with n squared and I'll have n plus one over two n and one over n times n is just one. So this is the summation. And now let me find the limit. So the limit when n goes to infinity of the summation would be the limit of this. And when I, when I find the limit when n goes to infinity, I take the highest power, the term with the highest power. So from the first term, I have n times two, and this will give you the highest power. So it's 2n squared over 6n squared plus here the highest power is n over 2n and plus 1. And now cancel n squared with n squared and n with n. So the limit would be 2 over 6 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. And 2 over 6 plus 3 is over 6 plus 6 over 6 will give you uh, 11 over 6. And you can check by the calculator that uh, this actually, the answer, if you find uh, this definite integral using the calculator. Uh, the second question. This is y, find dy by dx. So I need y prime. Well, the derivative of the integral, according to fundamental theorem of calculus, will give you the function. But here I have ln x and x cube. So I replace t by ln x first. Then I multiply by the derivative of ln x minus, I replace t with x cube, so x cube to the power of 6 minus 1. And then I multiply by the derivative of x cube, which is 3x squared. We can leave it like this, or write here x to the power 18. Minus. The third question, sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and find the area of the region. Well, I have two curves here. So first thing to do is to find the intersection point between these two. This is a parabola and this is a straight line. So y equals y or four minus x squared equals three. So if you take x, x squared to the right-hand side, bring three to the left-hand side, you will have x squared equals one, then x would be plus or minus one. So they intersect at x equals plus or minus one. And if x is one, y is always three. So these are the two intersection points. Y equals to three is this horizontal line. And this is a parabola. Uh, you know Y equals negative X squared is a parabola opens downwards. And this four will take it four units up. And negative one and three would be this point, one and three this point. So this would be the graph of the parabola and it will continue like this. But the region 
he is asking about is this region. This is enclosed by the parabola and the straight line. If you take here a vertical rectangle to find the area, then the area would be integral. The width of the rectangle is dx. So here you write the width of the rectangle. Since it's x, x runs from where to where? From negative one to one. And now you write the height of the rectangle, f of x, the height of the rectangle, which is four minus x squared minus three. The height of the rectangle would be the above function minus uh, the below one, okay? So four minus x squared minus three, because here y equals to three. Find the area, so we need to evaluate this uh, integral. Four minus three is one. Integral of one is x. Integral of x squared is x cubed over three. From negative one to one. If you replace x by one, you will have one minus one over three. If you replace x by negative one, you will have minus one minus negative one over three. So here you have two over three. And here you have negative one plus one over three, so negative two over three. So when you add, you get four over three, and that's uh, the area. Evaluate the following integrals. I have x squared minus three x plus five over x, I can distribute. So I will write it x squared over x minus three x over x plus five over x. X squared over x is x and x cancels with x here and I'll have five over x. Now the integral of x is x squared over two. Integral of three is three x and five is a constant and integral of one over x is the then absolute value of x plus two. I have cosecant square x over cotan x. We will solve it by substitution. If we take u cotan x, then du would be the derivative of cotan, which is negative cosecant square x dx. Now look to the integral. Do we have du there? Yeah, we have it, cosecant square x dx, so I need a negative sign. I can multiply by a negative here and the negative outside. So the integral would be negative. Now, negative x square x dx, I can write it <laughs> du. And cotan x is u. So this is negative integral one over u is ln absolute value of u c. And now I can replace u by cotan x. And this would be. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given caps about the x-axis. I have a line and parabola. So let me find the intersection point. So put the two equations equal each other. So x squared equals x plus two. This is a second degree equation. Take everything to the left hand side. Uh, you can use calculator mod 5, 3, or if you can factor like this. And then either x minus 2 is 0, which means x is 2, or x plus 1 is 0, which means x is negative 1. If x is negative 1, y is 1. And if x is 2, 
y is, it is x squared. So if x is two, y would be four. So let us uh, sketch the graph. Negative one and one. This is the first intersection point. Two and four, this is the second intersection point. One of the equations is a line. If you just connect these two points, you will get the graph of the line y equals x plus two. And y equals x squared, we know the graph of y equals x squared. The vertex is here at zero, zero. And it will go like this. So where is uh, the region bounded by these two curves? It is uh, this region. And we need to rotate this region about the x-axis. So which is better here, a vertical triangle or a horizontal triangle? Of course, a vertical triangle because always the line is above the parabola. So the volume would be given by, I have the width of the rectangle as dx. And if you rotate this region about the x-axis, imagine that this region is rotated about the x-axis. Imagine that the rectangle is rotated about the x-axis. You will get a washer. So it is the first method, this can washer method. So it's pi integral x from where to where, from negative 1 to 2, outer radius square minus inner radius square. We find the outer radius when you start from the uh, axis of rotation from here and go up to the outer curve. So this distance, which is y, of y coordinates of this point, which lies on the line. So y of the line is x plus Two, so this is the outer radius, we raise it to the power two. And the inner radius would be the distance from the axis of rotation to the first curve, which is the parabola. And it is the y coordinate of this point, and the parabola has equation y equals x squared. So the inner radius is x squared. We raise it to the power two. And that's it. Uh, then this would be pi from negative one to two. Uh, let me uh, expand this. It's x squared plus two x times two, four x plus four minus x to the power four x. Integral of x squared is x cubed over three plus four x squared over two, plus four x minus x to the power five over five from negative one to two. I, I start by replacing x by uh, two, so I'll have eight over three. Four over two is two times four, that's eight. 4 times 2 is again 8. 2 to the power 5 is 32 over 5 minus negative 1 to the power 3. This is 2 times 1, 2. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus negative 1 over 5 or plus 1 over 5. Now, if you put this uh, in the calculator, you can check that the final answer is 72 over 5, and do not forget uh, pi. All right. Use the method of cylindrical shells to find 
the volume generated by rotating region bounded by these two curves about the y-axis. Again, I have two curves, so I need to find the intersection points. So I put x cube. First curve is y equals x cube. Okay, and the second curve y equals square root of x. I need to raise both sides to the power two, so I get rid of the square root. And now I can take x to the other side, and I can take x as a common factor. Then there are two possibilities, either x is zero, or x to the power five equals one, which means x equals one. If x is zero, square root of zero is zero. If x is one, square root of one is one. So that's the graph, zero, zero, one, one. Y equals x cube has this shape, and then it goes like this. And y equals square root of x has this shape. So this is y equals square root of x, and this is y equals x cube. And the rotation is about the y axis. And since we are using cylindrical shells, then we will use a rectangle, which is parallel to the axis of rotation. So the volume here, the width of this rectangle is dx, and the formula is 2 pi x f of x. Uh, x runs from 0 to 1. 2 pi x is the radius of the cylinder. When you rotate this rectangle about the y-axis, you get a cylindrical shell. So x, in fact, is the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle, which is x. And now f of x is the height of this rectangle or the height of the cylindrical shell. And the height of the rectangle is the function above, which is square root of x minus the function below, which is x cubed. He said what? Find the volume. So we need to uh, solve the question. 2 pi, you can take it outside, and I need to multiply x times square root of x. I'll have x to the power 1 plus half. That's 3 over 2. And x to the power 3 plus 1, that's 4. Then the answer would be 2 pi times x to the power 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2 times 2 over 5 minus x to the power 5 over 5 from 0 to 1. And I now replace x by 1, then by 0. If I replace it by 0, everything would be 0, so I'll just replace it by 1. So I'll have 2 over 5 minus 1 over 5, and this is 1 over 5. So the final answer is 2 pi over 5. That's the volume. Question seven, set up, but do not evaluate an integral for the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by these two curves. Well, I have one curve here, sine x, and y equals to zero and x from zero to pi. Well, x from 0 to pi, let us say this is pi. And this is the line y equals 0. Sine x, sine 0 is 0. Sine pi over 2 in the middle is 1. And sine pi is 0. So the graph of sine in this region is, is like this. This is the graph of sine. And from 0 to pi, y is 0, sine x. So this is the region, in fact. 
This is the region, the region. And we need to rotate this region about the curve, uh, the line y equals negative two. So about this line. Well, which rectangle should we use? Is it easier to use a horizontal rectangle or a vertical rectangle? In fact, a vertical rectangle here would be an excellent choice because always the sign is above the x-axis. So if we use a vertical rectangle, it would be perpendicular to the axis of rotation so the method here is disk and washer's method. So the volume would be given by integral pi times outer radius square minus inner radius square. And the width of the rectangle is dx. X runs from zero to pi. So let us just find the inner radius and the outer radius. The inner radius, uh, or we start from the axis of rotation, go up to meet the first uh, curve, which is the x-axis, the line. This distance is always fixed. It is only two because this is negative two. So uh, the inner radius is two. So two square, I will have four here. That's the inner radius. The outer radius is this distance up to this point, okay? Uh, you can find it by finding the above y minus the below y. So the above y is the curve, y equals sine x. So this is sine x minus the below y is negative two. So minus minus two, that's plus two. You raise it to the power two, so this is outer radius square minus the inner radius square. Or if you want, you can think of this as the distance from here to here is y, which is sine x, and from the x-axis to this line is two. So in fact, this distance is sine x plus two, it's clear. So this will give you the volume. The last question, find the average value of this function on the interval from zero to one. The definition of the average value of a function, f average, is equal to one over b minus a, which is pi minus zero, which is pi. Then the integral of this function, f of x, which is cosine x, all three times sine x dx, from a to b or from zero to pi. Now, to find, uh, this integral, I have cosine x raised to the power three. So I'll take u equals cosine x. And now du would be the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x dx. Well, I need neg du, du is negative sine x dx, so I need a negative sign here. And I'll take negative sign, I'll multiply by negative sign outside. So minus times minus is positive. So now I can write this integral negative one over pi integral of co du is negative sine x dx and cosine x is u, so this is u cubed. And now the limits of the integral are from zero to pi. Let me change this from x values to u values. If x is zero, u would be cosine zero, which is one. And if x is pi, u would be cosine pi, which is negative one. So that's it. Uh, the integral of u cube is u to the power four over four from negative one to one. Actually, I can take this four out. So I'll have negative one over four pi and then u to the power four, replace it by one, then replace it by negative one, you get also one. And one minus one is zero. Uh, so the average value of the function here is uh, zero. 
and this would be the end of uh, this exam. I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, listening to uh, this video, and I hope you will be able to study well for your exam. Uh, thank you very much, and see you in another uh, videos soon. Study well for the next exam and have a nice time.